Well, welcome back. I'm, uh, I've been working on the motor now for that uh, that walnut machine that you just saw in the previous video. This is the one barrel two spring motor. And uh, as those of you know about, uh, those of you that know about Victrolas, this was pretty darn dirty when I got it out and took it all apart, and took the springs up. The reason I'm showing this is because I did something unorthodox. First time I've ever done it. It was necessary in the circumstance that I had to deal with, but it looks like it may have turned out okay. It's going to be, don't laugh too much, really. <laughs> so anyway, when I got this motor out of the machine, it was covered with gunk, as uh, those, those of you that are experienced know very well. And so I cranked it up, and it worked, seemed to work okay, a little thumping and bumping. And I cranked it up again, and it worked, and I cranked it up a third time, and bang! One of the springs either broke or whatever, and there was a whop, 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 whop. Those of you that are experienced know what that is. So, I took it all apart, and the spring was uh, not so good. The, uh, the end of it was, uh, I don't know if you can see it, I will try to bring it to the lens. Uh, you can see the end of it was pretty boogered up, and I cleaned it up. This was splintered, it was shattered, everything was wrong. And in the process of that happening, it broke the, uh, what some people call the rivet, what is also called the spring hook. And you can look in here, and these are for those of you that don't know. Inside, you see those little rivets. Well, let me get the spring again, and I'll show you. This is, uh, this is for the people that are not aware. You can see how, how the spring hooks on that spring hook, and then winds around and around and around. Well, this one was broken. This is another spring barrel that goes with a different motor. And uh, I can't use this, it belongs to somebody else. So anyway, I didn't have any more spring hooks. And so I contacted all of the suppliers I know of, and nobody had any, they were all out of stock. So what did I do? Well, I made the decision to do a little or unorthodox because, and this may help some of you, I'm keeping this machine. It's the, this, this walnut Victrola with this motor is staying in my collection. So if what I did turns out to be a, a big mistake, well, I'm the warranty, so I can, I can take it apart again and fix it. So what I did was, when this rivet, or when this this thing broke, I had to grind off this outside rivet, which is peened over, and punched it out. So there was a hole in there. The hole was approximately eighth of an inch. And I decided to put something else in there because I couldn't get what should be there. So I decided to use a machine screw. There's the machine screw I used. It's a number eight machine screw. Phillips, doesn't have to be Phillips, but that's what I had. An eighth of an inch wide, it fit the hole perfectly. So, let me bring the can up again. And what I did was, I put it in the hole. I'll make sure you can see this. I put it in the hole, fit perfectly, and then I wound the nut up and tightened it up. But before I did that, I used a thread locker, a red thread locker, which is designed to do what it says. It locks these threads and machine parts together permanently, at least that's what they say. 
and because the screw is fairly long, after that was set up, I cut off the extra and filed off some of the excess. Now I'm going to start this machine. It's running great. And you will see, coming around the corner, I think you will see it <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I hope so. I know I'm keeping you a long time, but I want you to see this. For the pros who know what you're doing, you uh, you got to be laughing. you got to be really laughing. But I wanted to get this machine going. I wanted to make sure the motor was in good shape, and it was. There you see the nut coming around. Now, I've cranked this thing up hundreds of times already to test it. I left it with a lot of tension on it. I'll move this closer so you can see it. I left a lot of tension on it, it didn't break, and it's been cranked up 35 to 40 cranks at least 30 or 40 times. And there has not been any trouble at all. It's running smoothly. So if one day uh, I decide to play some records on this machine and it goes bang and thwop, up, 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 up again, well, Hopefully by then I'll have uh, spring hooks in stock <laughs> and I can fix it. So anyway, I thought you might be interested in that. It's kind of long. I, I hope I'm not boring you. The, uh, the professionals are probably laughing, as I said, but don't, hey, guys, don't laugh too hard. Huh? For the uh, amateurs, so to speak, that, uh, that have a machine that they need to fix and they don't know how to do it or where to go, well, this might help you. These number eight machines, machine uh, not, uh, screws, yeah, machine screws are all over the world. You can get them at big block stores, you know, hardware stores everywhere. So it may help. Anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry it's too long, but thanks again. Bye bye.